In this episode, we look at why you might want to calibrate your computer's monitor and how you can do so without spending thousands. Check this out. I am not a professional color monitor calibrator. I don't have any certifications on that. I am just a photographer that's trying to learn how to make better video. So just need to understand that's where I'm coming from here. So I'm not a super expert on this, but this is uh, kind of my little journey so far. And uh, based on what my research has taught me, what I've tried so far in terms of monitor calibration. Now the story starts, I think for me, like it does for many others. Um, doing just basic editing, maybe a little bit of color correction, maybe a little bit of grade, color grading on my computer. Then when I upload it online, look at it on other computers and it just doesn't look like I intended it to look. So there are a lot of factors going on there in terms of how things appear on a different system, a different computer. So it became really, really frustrating and I looked into different ways on how to try and address that issue. Now, one thing you can do, the first step you can take is to calibrate your computer's monitor. And there are a variety of ways you can go about that. We're gonna talk about using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, which is where I've ended up so far. And I think I'll probably end up investing in better monitors. As, uh, as I tell this story, I think you'll understand why. Now, first of all, this is not a guide for those that are setting up a professional color grading suite, obviously, but I needed to state that just in case. Those kind of solutions are in a completely different league. Those we're talking about buying reference monitors that cost anywhere from maybe 4,000 to 20 to $30,000 for a single reference monitor plus getting that signal out of your computer via a video I.O. card, which is very different than a graphics card that most computers have. So completely different league. We're not addressing that here. Someday when I have a lot of money sitting around, maybe I'll go down that path. But for now, I'm using a computer monitor hooked up to my computer directly via the graphics card. And that's what we're going to talk about here. Now, the first question you might ask is, well, how is calibration going to help if nobody else is calibrating their monitors? And that's a great question. I think the thinking is this, that if you can at least start from a standard setting, and we'll just call that a maybe a color space for now, there it's, it's a little broader than that, but if you can start with a co standard color space um, that's recognized as a standard across the web and across computers, regardless of how well or poorly anyone else's monitor is displaying things, at least you know that that was the intended color space. So everyone else's monitor, say someone else out in uh, Timbuktu is looking at your video on their monitor. Their monitor may be way off in terms of calibration, quite a bit off of the standard. And what they're seeing, everything they see actually, is gonna be that far off the standard. So at least you know that since you published your video or your photograph, using a standard, you know that it at least started from the right place. And you can't really do anything to change everyone else's monitors, but at least you can start there. So that's the thinking behind calibration. Now, the first question, you know, I asked, and I think a lot of us ask is, well, can't you just find out which, um, which models of monitors out there are really, really good and really, really accurate and just buy one of those? Well, the answer is, is that I don't think it works that way. Even with the really high-end monitors, you still have to calibrate them at least the first time um, and actually, normally, most people that are doing serious work would actually calibrate them from time to time. So you even even in the same batch of monitors, or maybe even maybe more in different batches of the same monitor, you are going to see some variations. So there is still a case for calibrating from that standpoint. Also, you use your monitor in an environment that's unique from anyone else. So, you also have to calibrate based on your environment and the type of lighting that you typically have in the area where you're using your computer, um, the kind of light you have there, so on and so forth. Now, one of the first things I've uh, kind of learned in my research is that typically you wanna actually do your color grading and color correction work in a fairly low key room. So you don't want a lot of light spilling in from the outside if you can avoid it. Um, the light that you do have should be high CRI light um, what I do in my particular case is I actually have, I turn off all the lights, I block the windows so that I don't have light coming in the windows. And then I also have a high CRI CFL bulb, contact fluorescent bulb behind the monitor aimed at the wall to just put a little splash of light up behind the monitor. And the idea there is that 
It reduces the fatigue on your eyes because you don't, you're not looking at a super high contrast. It's different if you're just in a dark, dark room and just your monitor on, that's super high contrast and kind of fatiguing on your eyes after a while. Um, having a light behind the monitor aimed at the wall reduces that contrast and makes it a little bit easier on your on your eyes over time. Also, that light that I have there is a very controlled light. That is a relatively high CRI, kind of a, I think it's a 94 CRI compact fluorescent bulb. So I kind of know what I'm getting there. I know what I'm dealing with. And I calibrate in that environment with that setup. And that way the um, little colorimeter talking to the software knows how to set up my computer monitor so that it is more consistent over time. And actually, is able to represent as best as it's, that monitor is able um, the color space that we're aiming for. Another thing about monitor calibration, it does not suddenly take your $150 US monitor from a big box retailer and make it amazing and awesome and just as good as any monitor you could possibly buy. All it does is it takes your monitor and adjusts it to the point where it can best represent some sort of color space standard. So it's not, it's not gonna fix a monitor that's really bad in a lot of other ways. Also, calibration is not necessarily going to make the picture on your monitor look amazing. A lot of people think that, okay, if I calibrate, my images are just gonna pop off the screen and they're gonna look so amazing and awesome. And actually, typically, it's funny, the first time you calibrate, you may actually be pretty disappointed with what you see. You'll be like, Ew, it looks kind of dim and the colors aren't as saturated and it looks not that great. And actually that's, <laughs> that's, that's to be expected. Um, but again, as you're calibrating to a standard, at least you're getting to a good starting point where you can then do your work. You know, you can get the look that you want in your footage or in your photograph, and then you can publish from there and be relatively confident that everyone else is going to see pretty close to what you originally intended. So what calibration is typically doing is it's, it's actually making it so that your monitor, um, the colors that your monitor represents are fall within a specific color space and that the contrast and the brightness are also um, representative of the standard, whatever that standard may be. And we're going to talk about one in particular in just a minute here. So that's the main idea. Get the colors right, get the contrast right, and get the brightness set right. And between those three things, it, it kind of sets your monitor up to, to try to adhere to whatever standard there is out there that we're aiming for, and then you can do your work from there. What is this standard I keep talking about, this standard or color space? We're actually talking about sRGB for computers, and that's gonna be for Windows and Mac computers. That's the, the standard that the web is really kind of built around. Now, obviously there are devices that connect to the web that use different color spaces, but the majority, even if I look at the stats for my YouTube channel, for example, I'm seeing that the majority of you are actually watching from your computer still, even in 2014, September 2014. But that's a reality for now. So for now, aiming for the sRGB um, color space is really probably what you want to start with. Now, as a background, I have two relatively inexpensive, pretty, one of them is a really low quality monitor and the other one is an okay monitor. The first one is a really old HP. I don't even know the model number. My other monitor is a Dell UltraSharp U2413. At the time I bought it, about a $475 monitor. The idea with this is it's supposed to be a wide color gamut monitor so it can represent um, other color spaces as well other than sRGB, which is a relatively narrow one in terms of the number of colors it can cover. But, um, what I'm finding over time is that when I do my grading, I really probably need to start, if I'm publishing for the web, I really probably need to start in sRGB, and I find that I get more consistent results when I do that. This is an approximately $250 device that you place on your monitor, connect it to your computer via USB, and the software runs the monitor through a series of color swatches to calibrate your monitor in terms of contrast, white balance, and color space to get you as close to the sRGB standard as possible. On more modern monitors, it can change the monitor settings for you. On older, less capable monitors, you may have to manually set the brightness settings. It also tests the quality of your monitor to let you know how closely it's able to reproduce the sRGB color space and white balance and contrast. It can also test the uniformity of your monitor, whether you have any bright or dim spots from the backlight. The process takes about three to five minutes and it's recommended that you'd run it every four weeks or so. Now, as I mentioned before, the first thing I noticed after I did my first calibration was that it looked really dim, first of all. And secondly, it seemed like the colors weren't as nice. So it's really, again, what you're trying to do is limit your monitor's output to meet this standard sRGB, and then 
as you do your work, you can really understand what it's going to look like on the majority of computers out there on the web. So yes, it will look a little different. And yes, you can switch it back and forth. So if you're just going to do regular desktop use and you want to go to a wider color gamut, you can definitely do that. And then when you're coming back in to do any sort of color grading or color correction, just switch back to the profile that the X-Rite i1 Display Pro made for you. Big question, is it worth the $250 price tag? I think it definitely is. Now, there are other solutions out there. I'm not trying to suggest this is the only one or the best one. It's the one I bought. There are lots of other options out there, and I, I, I'm not really in a position to say which one's the best, but what I can say is that the X-Rite i1 Display Pro is pretty good, and it's done a nice job for me. It's made it so that when I do my color correction, my editing, my grading, that it all comes out a lot better than I expect when I go and watch it on other computers, other people's computers. So I'm, I'm finding it's a lot less random or fe that feels less random and it feels less frustrating just subjectively. So for me, it's really been a $250 investment that's really paid off. Now, if you go out and do some research and if you've done research on this in the past, you know that on the forums out there and <clears throat> various other places that every once in a while you'll encounter a purist or um, someone who's kind of really dedicated and, and knows a lot more about this certainly than I do. And they will tell you things like, you can't grade on anything that costs less than $8,000. And so I, I think the, the short answer is, is maybe that's true for the type of clients that they're doing work for. But for you and I that are doing just stuff for fun and free, and we're just trying to make it look as best we possibly can, this is a nice first step. So I, so don't, don't get discouraged if you hear that kind of stuff. Um, this is still a good first step. And in fact, I think we're finding over time um, there, that a lot of those big post-production houses where they've done color work in the past, um, there are fewer and fewer of those. And now it's a lot of independent people and they are grading on monitors that cost less than $20,000. Um, now granted, a lot of them are still grading on something that costs more in the five to $6,000 range, but um, they are doing color calibration on those monitors. And they also, um, in some cases, they're actually, there are post houses and post smaller groups that are actually just doing a lot of their post work on IMAX and stuff like that. Now, granted, they calibrate those just like we've talked about here, um, but they're not necessarily using this really, really high-end stuff. So it really depends on the program that you're trying to produce. If you're just producing for YouTube or Vimeo, then I think what we've talked about here today is a good first step. Now in the long term, I'm still researching other things that I might do. I think this is a nice first step, as I say, but I think that um, as, thing, if, you know, as, as you progress and grow a little bit more in terms of um, the type of work that you produce, and particularly if you're going to start doing this professionally, um, it's time to start kind of researching and finding out what other solutions are out there. And I think there are some relatively affordable solutions. HP recently released their new generation of uh, dream color monitors. And you know, while you, if you just hook that up to your PC, I don't know if that's the right, you know, the best thing to do, but um, there are some solutions out there that looks like they're getting more and more affordable and that you can do pretty good work on them. You can do, you can work on a monitor that's really pretty close to the standards that you need to meet. And again, if you're doing it for web, it's sRGB. If you're doing it for broadcast TV, that's going to be Rec. 709. If you're doing it for um, cinematic projection, it's going to be DCI. So there are, you know, a lot of things to learn out there. But again, if you're just doing it for web, this is a great first step. Thanks for checking out today's episode. I hope you found this helpful. If you know more about this or we said something that may have been misleading or uh, something that can help the whole little community here, definitely leave a comment down below for us so that we can all learn together. Again, thanks for checking out the episode. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that. We'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.